Mike and Nate and Harrison teaming up to help you sell your home faster and for top dollar. The fight for term limits in Washington goes to Augusta. Gianna PDQ to our telephone line. Welcome back from U.S. term limits. Ken Quinn, he's on line two right now. Good morning, uh, Ken. Good morning to you. Good morning, Sir Taylor Rick. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on this morning. And joining you on line three is Maine State Representative Nate Wadsworth, the Republican of Hiram. Nate, welcome to the George Hill Rick Tyler Show. Hey, thanks for having me. Ken, we're going to start with you and ask you to remind listeners what is this discussion of and the need for an Article 5 application? Yes. So, an Article 5 convention, which is Article 5 of the U.S. Constitution, that's the amending provision of our Constitution. There's only um, two ways to propose amendments. Either two thirds of both houses of Congress can propose the amendment, and then it takes three quarters of the states to ratify the amendment. And that's how we've um, ratified all 27 of our amendments. They all have come from Congress. The second option that has never been done before, but it has come very close, it gives the state legislatures equal authority to propose amendments as well. And it requires two thirds of the state legislatures to pass an application. Typically, it's a resolution on the same subject. And once two thirds of the state legislatures do that, then Congress is forced to call the convention where the states will meet, draft, uh, and then vote on the amendment. And that's what we're seeking to do for an amendment to put term limits on members of the U.S. House and Senate. Okay, and State Representative Nate Wadsworth, this battle now, instead of waged in Washington, D.C., gets waged in Augusta. Yeah, where we function a lot better. Uh, yeah, tomorrow in the State and Local Government Committee, uh, we're going to hear this resolution uh, proposing term limit amendment, amendments for Congress uh, under the Article 5 uh, provision of the U.S. Constitution. Okay, let, let's kind of stick with that because I think a lot of people I haven't been in the weeds on this one. I know I haven't. Uh, Maine would join other states in the call for an Article 5 convention if it passes. Uh, 34, let's see, 34 state legislatures uh, have to pass it on. Uh, it must be ratified by three-fourths. Let, let's go back to what the Supreme Court has said in the past, and we'll, we'll go back uh, to Ken. Uh in the Thornton case, it said states cannot impose qualifications for members of Congress stricter than those written in the Constitution. Is that why we're where we are? Yeah, that case was actually against our organization, U.S. Tournament versus Thornton, and uh, for a little bit of history for the folks. So back in the 1990s, 23 states passed laws to put term limits on their own congressional delegations, and Maine was one of them. The people voted for it. Most of the states, the people voted for that at the ballot box. And in 1995, the court, uh, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that the states, uh, through that process, it could not be done. It had to be accomplished under Article 5 of the U.S. Constitution as an amendment. And so there's only two ways to get that done, and I don't I think most of us would agree we don't have a lot of faith that the members of Congress are going to uh, pass by a two-thirds majority term limits on themselves. And so this is the only way this can be accomplished is through our state legislatures. And I want to thank uh, Representative Wadsworth for taking the charge and leading this effort uh, here for us in Maine in the House. And also Senator Rick Bennett is uh, the, our lead sponsor in the Senate. So I think uh, we've got to get this done. Well, Nate, the only way then to impose term limits on Congress would be through the constitutional amendment. I know that you uh, kind of rely on some polling. Uh, there has been a poll that 75% of likely voters in Maine support term limits on Congress, including across party lines, more Republicans than Democrats, but still uh, Democrats were pretty fairly and strong on the issue, 71%. So you, you think that history is not going to repeat itself and you're going to get this done? I sure hope we can. I, I have proposed this before, uh, but I can tell you, you know, this is my fourth term. I've gone door to door. I, I, I hear it so much. Uh, you know, I get a lot of emails from it, and uh, people are just like, Congress is broken. Uh, we have to do something. And, uh, you know, to me, we have term limits in Augusta. Augusta functions a lot better than D.C., so I'm sure hopefully we can get it done this time. Nate, let us stick with you on this one. If we got a nickel every time that we heard someone on our radio station say Congress is broken, we could probably <laughs> pay off the federal deficit. <laughs> if it's such a great idea, tell me who's the resistance. Name names. Well, I think both parties are, are looking.
little resistance to it. And, and I think a lot of it is, you know, people don't quite understand the Article 5 process. Uh, and so it takes a lot, to, a lot of education from our side. Uh, you know, in high school, I learned to recite the preamble and I learned about the Bill of Rights, but I, I never learned about the Article 5 process. So um, I wouldn't say there's any really specific people in Augusta that I, I need to name or, or could name. It's just, it just takes some education. And, uh, okay. Ken, I'll go to you. And by the way, I had to sing the preamble from Schoolhouse Rock to my kid <laughs> last <laughs> night in his homework. He's a 12, uh, he's 12 years old. Um, Ken, who's the resistance? Name names, if you would. Okay, well, uh, in regards, I'll name names, uh, in regards to organizations, so tomorrow there, there's the hearing, like uh, they had mentioned, and I hope folks would uh, at least send in their written testimony. Uh, if they go to Maine Term Limits on Facebook, just Maine Term Limits, there's a link there that they can do that. Um, so there's groups on both sides, on the left and the right. On the right, you have groups like the John Birch Society, Eagle Forum. They have been opposing any Article 5 uh, for decades now. On the left, you have groups like uh, Common Cause, uh, the League of Women Voters, Center for Budget and Policy. So these are groups that are working together behind the scenes to prevent any Article 5 application from ever getting passed. They actually try to rescind previous Article 5 applications. So once one of these is passed, it stays out there until uh, either the convention is called or until it gets basically nullified. So there's efforts out there uh, to, to stop this process. Now, when it comes to names, obviously the, the folks in Congress, the ones uh, they, I, I know that individuals are telling the parties, listen, don't support this. Uh, so there's veiled threats from Washington to the local party leaders. And so this is a heavy, heavy lift. And we've got to get the American people behind this because we need to break. It's not a Republican or Democrat problem. It's an incumbent party problem. And so that's why we have got to get this done uh, to change the actual structure of our system to have a better government. Okay, Nate, I'll go to you. Let me have some fun with this, okay? I'll, I'll be Joe, Joe Six back out here. Hey, Nate, we've got term limits now in Maine in the legislature. We've got term limits. We call them elections. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, but just, you know, that's, there are elections, but the money that the incumbent uh, can, can fundraise from, and, you know, being in power, it's called power of incumbency, it, it's just, it, it's not a fair fight. And, you know, many, many voters just, uh, it, 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 where it's called rational ignorance, you know, they they show up to the poll, um, maybe they're uninformed, and uh, they just vote for the name they know, and and uh, I think this would help level the playing field. Uh, I guess we can go back to Ken. Uh, is the electorate so uninformed that they don't know who they're voting for? Well, the election doesn't get a choice, really. When you think about it, how, most people, you ask them about the upcoming election, regardless of when it is, like, well, I'm, I'm going to vote for the lesser of two evils. It's because they typically, they obviously are not going to vote for the person completely on the other side of their political viewpoint. And so they are, they're only stuck with the one person that is completely protected by the parties, by the, the super um, PACs the millions of dollars, the, the lobbyists and the special interest groups. And so as, as Nate was saying, there are so many advantages that the incumbents have that it's virtually impossible for anyone to, uh, to, to defeat an incumbent. In fact, so many good people don't even bother to run because they just can't raise that kind of money. And then if they do, they're discouraged by the powers that be. And so what term limits will do you know, the framers, you know, Thomas Jefferson, folks like that, a lot of them were in favor of rotation of office. They realized if you have an opportunity to hold an office for life, you will because the voters will not change, um, will not vote them out. And it's just human nature. People will vote for the person that they recognize the name. And obviously incumbents have such an advantage with just name recognition. Ken Quinn is on the line with us. He's with U.S. Term Limits, also State Representative Nate Wadsworth, a Republican of Hiram. We're talking of U.S. Term Limits, looking for the Article 5, an application to the Maine legislature to emplace term limits. We're not talking Augusta. We're talking in Washington, D.C., but the fight is waged in state capitals. Ken, in support of Nate and his efforts, to what states do you point and say, they did it over there, you can do it here in Maine? 
Well, uh, we just passed in West Virginia uh, two weeks ago, um, and that took several years. Our, you know, we have folks that have been uh, working for us at the Capitol, and it takes a lot of time, as Nate was saying, re- um, educating the legislators. And we have a pledge that we ask for them to, to sign. We have about 27 Maine legislators that have signed our pledge. Uh, this is actually a bipartisan effort here in Maine. We have some Democrats that have jo- joined on. And so to get it done, it does take education. This is not going to happen the first time it's introduced. Obviously, you guys know I've been around for quite a while trying to get this done. And um, we passed in Florida, Alabama, um, Missouri, um, uh, we have a good chance of passing in Wisconsin in the coming weeks. So a number of states, we are currently active this year in a number of states where we have a very good chance of passing. We just passed the Tennessee House last week. We're hoping to get it done in the Senate. And um, as Representative Waz was mentioned, people are getting upset and they're putting a lot of pressure. And that's what, this needs to come from the grassroots. It, it can't be just done by me going around to legislators. It needs to come from the people. And that's why we need are individuals in the states that support this to reach out to their state senator and their state rep and say, listen, please get on board with this. We need it for our country, and we know Congress isn't going to do it. It has to come from you. And all this process does, and I like to share this little history, Congress has introduced 12,000 amendments to the U.S. Constitution. All this process does is give the state legislatures the same opportunity that Congress has taken advantage of over 12,000 times. Just propose a reform. That's all it does. Nate, with necessary support, if you got it done in West Virginia, I think Ken mentioned Tennessee. What's the likelihood with the makeup of the current Maine legislature that you can see this through? Uh, we're we're going to try really hard. I, I, you know, I don't know until we've heard it and the people put pressure on, on the Maine legislature, but we're going to try really hard. Okay, you're talking about HP 438, I think. Um, and the lead s- Senate sponsor is Richard Bennett out of District 19, a House Speaker. Nate Watchworth, you're, you're in Nate Watchworth, you're District 70. You've got 26 members of the legislature have signed the pledge. But Rick's question, I think, is to the, to the point. Democrats control the House, the Senate, and the Blaine House. We've seen what's going on down there. We'll, uh, t- I, I want to go to the poll. I want to go to the uh, bookie today and take a bet. <laughs> should, where should I put my money? Need the listeners out there to raise the roof with some noise making and get this on their radar. And there's this is absolutely a win win for any state legislator because two things they're doing the will of the people. If you truly are, if you're in the state legislature and you believe in doing what your constituents want, over 80% of your constituents, regardless of where, what party they're in, on average, want this. And they've been wanting it for decades. So to be a good legislator, you should be listening to your constituents. And this also will give the voters more opportunity for choices at the ballot box in the future. It will get more people with a variety of backgrounds participating in our government in Congress so that we can start to solve these problems that they refuse to fix. GHRT Rewinds, brought to you by your hometown real estate team, Laughlin and Wolfington Realty. Thinking about selling your home? Call 629-9211 and start packing.